Chris, what are the um, main emerging risks facing businesses in Germany today? Well, a couple of weeks ago, Lloyd's published its recent risk barometer, and it's interesting to see that um, due to Lloyd's, or according, according to this Lloyd's uh, risk indicator, cyber risks came up on the list of the top three risks that uh, companies across the globe and also companies in Germany face. And this is coming a little bit as a surprise because when Lloyd's did this risk survey the last time, two years ago, cyber risks were very down below at a 19 or 20th, um, coming in 20th. So cyber is really on the mind of the companies and the manager as a key risk they need to cover. Um, why is that so? It is so that um, I think nobody will doubt that IT processes and IT systems are a core value to each and every company nowadays. And these core values that the companies have are under attack out of the internet um, by cyber attacks. And these cyber attacks are growing. A recent study by Ponemon shows, for instance, that an average company is facing a cyber attack 1.8 times a week nowadays and this number is also rising it's up 40 percent from the year before so we have core values that are under severe threat uh, that are under severe threat and um, that need that need to be covered and what is agcs doing to respond to this emerging risk um, let me respond to this in, uh, in, in a couple of different steps first the first question that is on the table is it risks were covered by policies in the past as well but typically, in the past, uh, IT risks were covered as endorsements or enhancement of existing covers, for instance, of liability policies, of property policies, or of engineering policies. We think, and I think the market is following us in that, that IT risks should be covered in a separate standalone policy. Why so? Um, first, a standalone policy is more effective. It makes sense to have a look at the cyber risk holistically to make sure that you don't have gaps and they don't have overlaps in your coverage by just endorsing existing policies. Second, we think um, standalone. Stand um, second, we think that standalone coverage of IT risks is more efficient as well. Focus, have a focused discussion on the IT risk, finding solutions to the IT risk by um, drafting a cyber cover is more efficient than discussing this over and over again whenever another policy is up for renewal. And finally, thirdly, it's very important to see that certain IT risks are really new and they are not covered by traditional policies. So, um, if you take, for instance, data breach, where you have a lot of regulation coming in all the time, and to keep up with the regulation and to ensure that um, companies are protected against administrative um, action, it is important that you have a specific focus on these kind of IT risks. So overall, it really makes sense to come up with standalone covers. This is the general remark, and again, the market is following on that. Uh, Zurich came out with a policy that is quite similar the hours now HDI Girlings came, came up with a policy, so um, this is really the direction we are, we are currently going. What does our um, uh, policy currently look like? Um, there are um, many interesting and many new cover, and um, uh, there are many, in, no, how, how shall we put it? Um, there are many new and interesting um, concepts now on the table. The key issue is that you need modularity. In order to be able to come to really specific solutions for companies, you need modularity in your offer. What does that mean? First of all, if we look at our AGCS um, offer, we offer three different versions of cyber cover. We offer a base version, which is basically um, targeting smaller companies up to a volume, a turnover volume of 1.1 billion. Um, it's a base cover for cyber attacks up uh, to a capacity of 10 million very, with a very slim risk assessment, very, very slim um, underwriting process. Then we have the premium products offering coverage up to 50 million. Um, and there you come, um, then you have a broad variety of risks that you can cover. It's just cyber risks, it's also 
malpractice by uh, your own employees. It is technical breakdown, it is regulatory action that is coming um, there um, into the place. And it's, I think this kind of modularity having a very easy going, very easy access um, product on the one side and on the other hand having the ability to tailor made your process, your, your, your policies to larger risks is uh, of great importance. That's the one part of modularity, the kind of concepts you offer. Within the individual uh, concepts we then have, for if you take for instance the base cover, we have 11 different modules coming from liability, coming from property, coming from engineering, but also tackling the new things like regulatory action, data breach, or things like reputation protection, crime, uh, um, crisis management. Um, so there again, um, a broad variety of mod modules in the individual covers um, that are coming on, on top of that. Um, perhaps one thing, one, thing is one, one thing is important, one key element of any cyber policy is the issue of protection against business interruption because business interruption is really costing companies a whole lot of money and the issue of um, damage based business interruption as well as non damage based business interruption is in the discussion and on the table for a couple of years and therefore it does not come as a surprise that cyber policies offer a lot of protection against against business interruption and if again we look at the AGCS offer um, we basically really offer um, protection against business interruption for any risks. Risks that are coming from your employees. If you have malpractice by your employees, you can, um, and you have business interruptions due to uh, mistakes that your employees make, we cover that. If you have regulatory action asking you to shut down your company because you have, for instance, data breach or other things, we will cover that. If you have cyber attacks, if you have cyber attacks, leading in the end to a breakdown of your technical system, we would cover that. And if you have other technical failures, leading in the end to a breakdown or to harm of your production processes, we would also cover that. So you see, any, any risk you could think of that might in the end harm your business by interrupting your business is covered by the process, by the, by the product, at least by the product that is currently on the table by, by AGCS. And that's exactly what I mean when I say our our product is the broadest um, on the market. This whole lot of uh, different uh, triggers that might trigger business interruption, that is uh, pretty much unique to what we are and offering. this uh, new product, is it targeting specifically uh, the larger organizations or, or does it also cover risks that um, SMEs might experience? Um, well, the base cover we think should be really of some attraction to smaller companies as well. So uh, small and medium companies. Um, it is a basic cover for cyber attacks coming either from your own company or coming from, from the internet and it's offering um, a, a capacity up to 10 million. We think that this could be of some interest to smaller companies as well which um, and we, we bred that into, into, into developing the policy for instance by making the underwriting process very slim by making the risk assessment very slim so it's more or less um, the enter into IT cover without having extensive risk dialogues, which many companies are a little bit afraid of. Um, you have to take in mind that, or you have to keep in mind that the IT is a core value, and of course, an IT manager would, would do everything to protect um, all the secrets of the IT. So, an having an insurer coming on board, trying to offer or offering a certain cover, um, and then looking deeply into this this holy this holy uh, secrets that you have there with is, is, is um, a delicate issue and therefore you really need to have a risk assessment that is as slim as possible and for our base cover we can say well basically we refer from uh, we, re we refrain from from any kind of uh, certain deeper risk assessment it is more or less a barrier free entry into the cyber cover that's offered there and therefore it should be of some attraction to the um, uh, SMEs. Chris, what, what have you enjoyed most about DVS this year? Well, for me, it was the first time. You know, I'm seven months now into into the job. It is uh, it is fantastic. I really enjoy what I'm doing, and we have lots of things to do and many many targets. It was fantastic to meet so many clients at one one place. I, um, uh, basically, every large client was here. Smaller clients were here as well. We met we met many brokers. So, in a very dense. Um, uh, intense atmosphere you have the ability to meet 
all of your major clients and all of your major brokers, which is just fantastic. A lot of risk managers um, have highlighted capacity issues related to cyber insurance. Is this something that AGCS have, have also noticed? Now here we have a, clearly a different different view. We think, um, and I think we go in line with other market participation, market participants from the insurance industry, that there's a lot of capacity in the market overall, and that with regard to individual programs, that you can really, in the meantime, develop programs that offer sufficient capacity. AGCS ourselves, we bring 50 million euros of capacity to the table which is quite substantial it's the largest cover that is currently in the markets and what is more interesting is that we see a lot of programs now in cyber risks or in um, covering cyber risks that pretty have pretty much have the same traits of traditional insurance programs uh, such as from from property or from from liability meaning you have self retention um, of the company um, often offered through a captive, you have a layering of the programs, you have um, consortiums where you have a leader and certain followers providing capacity, um, and you have the possibility of um, facking out certain parts of, of the cover to the reinsurance market because the reinsurers are also interested in, in, in this market. So all the ingredients you really need you really need to structure a large program and that's exactly what we are doing we are leading several large programs of dax companies protecting specifically on a standalone basis against um, it risks and and some of these programs offer already a capacity of 100 million or even substantially more so we think a lot of capacity in the market um, a lot of capacity available for individual programs. It's more the difficulty of having in, of driving the internal risk discussion within the company.